The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Ambar Garcia, Brian Broadus, Nick Harris, and Derek Eagleton. It is Monday, October 7th, 2024, Season 20, Episode number 43. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star, presented by LG. LG is the world's number one OLED TV brand. For 11 years and counting, see why at LG.com forward slash OLED Evo. How are we doing this morning? Excellent. Awesome. We're doing. <laughs> we're doing. We're good. We're here. I was good. one point away from predicting that thing exactly how it needed to be. Look at there. You know, 16. You know I told what? You that thing was going to be close. I will tell you this: there were lots of things that happened last night that, if you listened to the break, you would have been well prepared for. <laughs> starting is very with very proud. Starting of his with weather the weather. Report. We said this all week last week. We were like, "This is going to be a problem," <laughs> and sure enough, it was. I guess not a problem because we didn't have to end up staying through the night, but it oh. certainly changed things about our night last night and about how much sleep we had for this morning, right? Yeah, it was a problem for those who had to do a pregame show. <laughs> right, you did an hour and a half I, I learned, unexpected I learned radio. What, I learned what uh, rain delay radio was all about. <laughs> my guys at the Rangers, no breaks. <laughs> my guys at the Rangers uh, reached out and they said, "Hey, how, nice job on that rain delay radio." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, well, thanks. That's what it's all about." So yeah, can't have yeah, the air. Yeah, it's yep. it's funny. I mean, hey, it's a uh, Good deal, though. Great win, yeah, you know, with no all doubt. that all that went down last night and with delays and the problems and stuff like that. You know, losing guys. I mean, it's that, that's 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 as good as it gets, right there. Yeah. Well, thank you to the fans. Uh, we had a lot of listeners that showed up to the game. Yeah. Uh, so that was. Did fun. you sign autographs? I did not. Did you? No, I don't ever sign. Oh, autographs. Okay. You okay. Don't want to sign. You get the yeah. calls like, "Hey, Amber, okay. come see me." Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay, so let's start with this. What, what do you say the big picture storyline? Obviously, the weather yeah. was a part of the storyline. Yeah. But what was the, the big picture takeaway, I guess, from this game? If we remember, you know, five, six weeks from now, well, how are we going to remember this game? I think Dallas's ability to run the football in that game really paid dividends to, you know, how they, they made Mike uh, had some play calls that were the third and six flip. I know you and I were talking about yeah. it in the pre show. And, you know, he, he, there was some really, he found some balance when he needed to find some balance and, you know, that, and, and their, their, their scheme up front was really, really good. Unfortunately, you know, with Guyton, he gets injured. Do you run the ball better? Yeah. But they also lost her big too. That was a big loss for them. So, I mean, it, this was a game of attrition in a yeah. lot of different ways. And, and so, you know, move, I, I, I guarantee you that, uh, that Tyler Smith did not take one rep at left tackle. Uh, this week they made the determination that hey if we have an injury this is the way they go and I give him credit for that he was ready to play uh, TJ Bass was ready to play um, you know Tober there were a lot of guys just go down through the roster tell me if you had uh, in your in your uh, in your bingo card this week did you have a span for two catches for 20 yards nope nope no. that's what you got to have when you go on the road and win games like this you need guys to play at a level that you didn't think that they could play at. And I think that's the overriding thing to me was of how many guys stepped up when they absolutely had to have them in that football game. Well, I thought they were going to lose. I had picked them to lose. I mean, they sure were close. <laughs> yeah, but they were close to losing that game. Very, very close up to the last You didn't last remind me I picked seconds. the Giants the okay, week before. Okay, okay. Um, but... All in all, I mean, in counting all the different things that they had working against them, mainly focusing on the injuries, they were able to keep fighting and, and get that win. It came down very close. But my thing is, you cannot keep playing this way and expect to win football games for the rest of the season and the teams that you're about to come up against. And a lot of it... Why not? We, we see the... Why not, Brian? Why not? Why not? You're gonna pay. You're gonna play better teams than that I think for the sure. Are a good and I team. think I think the Steelers. No, they absolutely are. Yeah. They absolutely are. That's but a good the Cowboys, defense. a lot of the things that they were doing were self-inflicted mistakes, sure. and that's where I'm being critical and of them. And they overcame them. That's where I'm being very critical of them. It's yeah. like them cleaning up because 
we saw it towards the end of the game. That would have cost them the game. Everything that led up to that. And I just think they obviously need to just play a better, a cleaner game. Limit the mistakes because we see how they get the ball rolling and then boom, they have yeah. to take steps back and go back. And then it's like, okay, now here we go. Here we go. But another mistake. All right, let's go back again. So it's those things that you know the talent is there. Mm -hmm. You know they can make it happen, but just be more disciplined, execute things better, and clean up the mistakes. We no. talk about that every week. That's an every week thing. It, this team might be what it is, and Mike talks about the penalties every week. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, that's one what of those happened. things they got to clean up. That's one of those things yeah. they, that we talk about it every week, and I, and I'm you bring it up every week. You know, hey, got to play cleaner. Got to do this. Got to do. Yeah. You know, yeah, they have to play cleaner. I, I think that to me. You know the the penalties. I, I I'm not a fan of Sean Hockley, the official. I, I I'm just not. And and I understand going in the game. Sometimes you're going to get. I thought it was a BS call. The 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 call on Wheat. I thought we you know yeah. with Wheat. I thought oh, he. Yeah. I, you know yeah. I thought that Hockley and the umpire standing behind just see the quarterback's head snap. Head snapped, yeah. And they think that he got hit in the face. He didn't. He got hit in the chest and area, and and it's a terrible call, and it gives them momentum, and it takes the quarterback out. But what do they do? They drive the ball down the field, mm -hmm. you know, and get and get uh, that that uh, that call. Now the undisciplined stuff, you know, when when your guard, you know, your backup guards in the game, and he gets a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for being an idiot, you know, of you know initiating yeah. contact. Yeah, that's that's things you absolutely have to have to correct. But to me, I. I I, I, there's things I just don't think that they're ever going to get better at. Now, the turnover part of it, though, I, I, I have a theory about what I, I think happened on the Dax interception to, 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 to Lamb in the corner. I have, a, I have a feeling. Now, if you say what I'm if, – if you hear what I'm about to say, you're going to say, oh, you're, you're, you're making excuses for Dak. And I'm not going to make excuses for Dak on that. I think Dak was trying to get a free play. Because he's he's if you watch the tape he's clapping his hands he wants the ball because they're late getting a guy on the field he's trying to get if, if that that guy has has to cross through their side of the field to get to the line to line up and Dak wants the ball so he's going to try and get a free play out of this and it's happened to him before I believe it was the Giants game did the same thing threw an intercept thought he had a free play next thing you know it's you know it's not it's an interception. The routes were poor on the outside. Lamb's route wasn't great. The Brooks route inside wasn't great. You know, so your Dak is kind of he's taking a shot, thinking he might get a free play, like we've seen a million times Aaron Rodgers do. He got burned on it now. Those there's things like that. Like I say, the the fumble on the goal line, hell of a play by that guy. Hell of a play by that guy. Now, what happened is they had penetration on the play, mm -hmm. and it forced if they stay outside, if they get the block where they secure the down guy, where ladder milk uh, is is secure, the ball's going to the edge. It's a walk in touchdown. Instead, Dowdle has to cut back, and now you have the collision in the hole. And Dowdle also made a critical mistake that he's going to learn from yeah. in the NFL. This is not college. You can't hold the ball out no. like that. These guys are way mm -hmm. too skilled. Yeah. They will punch it out. I think that was another thing where I remember the late great Gary Brown used yeah. to always say, don't stick the ball yeah. out there on the goal yeah. line. You're just asking for it to get punched out. He'll yeah. learn that lesson, I think. Well, a doubt, and I, I give Dak some credit because he could have reached, you know, he could have very well reached for the, uh, the 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 cone, you know, and then we'd had a situation like we had in the Raiders game several years ago where Carr makes the run and then and then uh, Jeff Heath hits him and the ball goes out the back of the end zone. Yeah, Dak kind of like, yeah, like Dak just kind of goes, okay, I'm going to try. But no, I know what's about to, yeah. I know what's about to happen yeah. here. So yeah, th there's things that could absolutely correct, but they beat a I, they beat a good football team. They're not good at quarterback. Here's a prediction: They play the Raiders next week. Get ready for Russell Wilson to be the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah. next week. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. So, and I hear what you're saying, Amber, and I agree. They have a lot of stuff to clean up. But if if we go back to the beginning of the season and we're back at training camp, yeah. and I throw out the question, to you guys, okay, guys, we're at week. Five was it five? Five mm -hmm. in the NFL season. We're at week five of the NFL season. Cowboys are going to be in Pittsburgh, and here are the players that will not be there. Yeah, Micah, Tank, Nealon, Williams, Cooks, Bland, Carson, oh. Guyton. How we feeling? You're picking an they L got, like she did. No, but my, but my point is, <laughs> my point is, 
I think and she's not wrong. No, she's absolutely right. But yeah. my point is, I think there is something to the fact that in the NFL, it's it's weird because you watch other teams. Like I do this all the time when I watch the good teams in the NFL. Yeah. Say the the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, you watch a team like that. They can play an awful game. They end up winning, and the narrative is. Man, that team, they just know how to figure it out. Even yeah. on their worst days, they know how to figure it out. Right. That's not necessarily the benefit that we gave the Cowboys, that, yeah. that a lot of people are giving the Cowboys about yesterday. And by the way, they still got to clean up all this stuff. I'm not saying that that's yeah. not a problem. It's absolutely a problem because you're right. They're going to play better teams than that. Even though I think Pittsburgh's a good team, they're going to play better teams than that. Starting this next week going against Detroit, I think yeah. Detroit's a better and team. But the fact of the matter is... Yesterday on a day when the quarterback was not playing his best football, yeah. on a day when they were they were absent a ton of players, top line players, they still managed to figure out on the road against a team that, by the way, loves to play nasty football like that. They figured out a way to be able to get a win. I think there's some credit that goes to that, in my opinion. Absolutely. I mean, you have to give credit when you list uh, when you look at right. the list of the guys that you just said. Absolutely. And my thing where I come in and become critical is we've seen them make these kinds of mistakes with their starters. We've seen them still do these things yeah. when they're healthy. And that's my problem. That's all where it comes from, yeah. where you see problems or mistakes when it comes to discipline, things that can be, <laughs> in my mind, quote unquote, easily adjusted yeah. or improved on. That's that's why I, it, it gets me really kind of upset in this topic because you're not seeing some kind of improvement in that area. Now, you look at the list, you got to give them credit. Credit to the freaking defense and the, yeah. play that, and, and the way that they played yeah. And, yeah. and the physical and, and tackling. Marshall Nealing, he comes out. And that, that's four. Def- wait, one, two, three. Four yeah. defensive Actually, ends. Six from the ones you had last year. Six of the defensive ends that were your top defensive ends are no longer playing for you as of last night. Yeah. Think about that. Because two of them left in free agency. And then well, four of them. Can't but, count that, no, you really. can't count that when you start thinking about just overall. Now, I'm not saying Cowboys should have signed them because I don't think they should have paid the money that they that they got in free agency. My point is when you just think about the, the level of talent that you've now been depleted. That's the whole point I'm making. Yeah. From there to where you are now. You are, I mean, like, you let those guys go, you lost your top three guys, and then your guy you drafted is out now, and who knows for how long that that's going to be, that's going to last. So it's, it, it's a, like, defensive end, that's a premium position, and you're down six guys from where you were last year this time. Yeah. You know? Uh, and I thought they, they did a very good job adjusting and, and improving defensively overall, and you saw the aggressiveness, and them – not really, and I've talked a lot about them being just a few steps behind. They were there. They were there with these guys competing the whole game. They didn't uh, get worn out, and it was a physical game. So credit to them, absolutely. But, again, the way I see it is – and I'll take the win. I'm not saying anything, absolutely. Like, I'll enjoy this for sure, and I'm happy they did. But it's just like when you see the – when it comes down to those – few 30 seconds of the game you're like man we shouldn't you're better than this you're yeah. better than this we should not have been put in this position it's very true i think there were a number of times last night in the game we were looking at each other like they should it feels like they should be up by a lot more than they are oh sure that because that, they, that, they, game, they, that game could have been that could have been a 30 to whatever yeah. game that, yeah you could, you well, could have yeah. run away from them last no, night no, but absolutely but to be honest with you, you and you maybe that's exactly what you are at this point you couldn't people, run away from people them. are going to watch this game on you know they're going to go back and whether it's the nfl stuff or however the you know they watch the games and you're going to see dallas had a chance to even punish them even more in the running game mm. and 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 it was a, a you know it was it's one of those you know, uh, ten guys. Uh, you know, ten guys doing their job, and then one guy not doing their job. Yeah, that that is a lot of it. I mean, they 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 continue to put these wide receivers in position to try and block, and it doesn't always work. Yeah. And it and it costs them. And it, it gets to the point where I'm like, just keep the wide receivers wide and take keep guys out of the box. Don't bring guys down in the box mm-hmm. that they have to block. And you know, so I don't know. I mean, to me, it it they're, they're, Dallas could have Dallas could have really put a hurting on them last night with the way and the fact that the longest run that quarterback had was eight yards. Hell, you'll take that every single day Absolutely. after watching, you know, the design runs that you know that uh, that the Ravens had the other day. The design runs the Steelers have. 
you know, for their quarterbacks. I mean, that's that that was a that was a, a good job by by playing run defense against him. All right, we're going to take our first break. We're going to come back and dive into some of the details. We're going to start first with Dak Prescott and his night. Obviously made the big play at the end of the game, but we'll talk about everything that happened before that. We'll be back, DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See ATT.com slash 5G for you for details. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change. A proud partner of the Cowboys is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take five, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. From the field to the festivities, Lucchese embodies the essence of luxury and tradition. Handcrafted with meticulous precision, each pair offers unmatched comfort and style. Stand tall while you're tailgating or cheering in the stands with the Dallas Cowboys collection by Lucchese. Shop the collection today at the Lucchese store at the Star in Frisco, or online at lucchese.com. Lucchese, the official boot of the Dallas Cowboys and Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Hey y'all, Matt Pittman of Meat Church here. With football season kicking off, I'm already gearing up to bring the smoker back to AT&T Stadium for some epic tailgates. But with that Texas heat, it's crucial to keep my beer hand cramping cold. That's where Yeti's insulated Colster can cooler comes in clutch. This year, you can even get them with the iconic star engraved on the side. Licensed Yeti Cowboys gear is now available at Stadium Pro Shops, concessions, and on Yeti.com. Check it out today. Yeti, official cooler and drinkware of the Dallas Cowboys. Back to the break. LG OLED Evo is the best TV in the game, but don't take our word for it. Digital Trends said the LG OLED G4 has the best picture quality they've ever seen. See it for yourself at LG.com slash OLED Evo. Welcome back. It is the second segment of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're discussing the Cowboys win last night, 2017, uh, versus the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. I was certain this game was going to overtime as as it was starting to wear down because it was just like everything about it just said overtime. But luckily, we didn't have to have any extra time. We had already been there for an extra hour and a half. So it was uh, perfect that the Cowboys ended it the way they did. But let's talk about Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. Um, He had, he was 29 of 42, 352 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions, a 90.6 rating, had the game winner. What were your thoughts on his overall game? Uh, Not just the end, but just throughout the game. How did you think he played? Any ideas? Uh, I mean... He did a good job at the end. <laughs> he handled <laughs> business. He handled business. But the thing that he made it, I think, um, just drew more attention is because leading up to the game, I was hearing from everybody, the fan base, everybody was putting all of this game on Dak and saying this is going to be a game where it all going to come down to what Dak does and how he handles the game. Yeah. And it did. Um, also, the running game, we'll talk about that later yeah. on. Sure. But I think that overall, in his performance, he had some really good passes, some really good throws. But at the same time, some of the decisions that he made, it didn't look like his usual self, like the experienced quarterback Dak, Dak Prescott that we used to see in um especially towards the end when they some of the throw to the interception to CD yeah and right when McCarthy 
call for timeout at a weird time, you know, when they were getting the offense going. Uh, you know what I'm talking I'm about? Ta- no, no, I'm trying to remember what happened in the moment. He challenged the play he shouldn't have challenged. But that was, yeah, that was a thing. But yeah. at times, it, yeah. it just felt rushed. The way that Dak was playing at times where it was not, he wasn't taking his time to think. And I get it. You get the pressure. But there were plays where he could have had the time. He just needed to wait. When he threw some mistake, uh, some passes that were incomplete, there were other guys on the well, field he that he could have. Open yeah. on this exactly. One play. Yeah. Yeah. Hunter, had he just waited like a few more seconds. So it was those things that I think... Uh, he didn't take the time, not that he had it always because yeah. of the pressure that was coming, but I just he uh, he could have been a lot more poised and confident playing and taking a handle of the game, but at the end he he did what he needed to do, but he just uh it was it was just um inconsistent throughout the game. Yeah, I, you know, this this team doesn't allow you the Steelers doesn't allow you any comfort. You know they really don't. the the thing that the thing that kind of makes you comfortable is for him when he sees that single high safety, and they played a lot of cover two last night too to kind of prevent. They were worried about you know some of the that when Dallas throws the four verticals and things like that, Dallas can play down the seam really really well. Um, man, his the, the the pass the touchdown pass that he threw. To Daddle in the corner, mm-hmm. the route that Daddle round to you know to get the, the to get the defender to fall, you know, and then continue into the end zone. It was just a, it was just so pretty because it was Prescott. He wanted to throw to his left, and he's kind of like, okay, I that's so muddy over there. Mm-hmm. Maybe old Dak throws it into a muddy bad look. Yeah, and you're and it's he forces it to Lamb, and it's a contested ball, and who knows what happens. But then he's able to come back, and the reason he's able to come back is because Steele had kept Watt wide enough. You know, Watt's going to play that real wide yep. technique, that wide nine technique outside there, and 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 Steele was unable to just kind of able to pin him out there, and it allowed Dak to to move and then to throw to Dowdle, and then mm-hmm. Dowdle with the adjusting catches, and I kind of felt like that. You know the 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 turnover he had in the pocket, he really didn't he didn't do you know his line any favor there. It was instead of moving and try, he kind of stayed hold, hold, stay. Yeah. It's like he's looking and now he's looking back. And with this Steeler front, I mean both tackles were beaten yeah. on the play. Yeah. Yep. I mean he really didn't have a chance. But you're still thinking like. It's the Steelers. We're down here. I got to throw this thing away. I can't. You can't hold the ball. Yep. Even the pass that he threw that was short to Tolbert in the end zone, he was kind of looking, looking, and then and then he tried to rush it because mm-hmm. he saw Tolbert break. Mm-hmm. So I felt like there was some p- parts of his game that were very calm and the way that he played, the flow of the game, the you know the touch and and that. And then why there do the- you feel like he's not running as much? Because we've seen him be good at like on the move, make those throws. Because he was in a boot this summer. <sighs> you think that's it? I think so. Mm. I don't think he wants to. I don't think Risky. he's really inter- interested. I think if he if he if he, wa- I thought they were actually maybe thinking about quarterback draw on that fourth down. You me know, too. Yeah, you know, they're like too, to yeah. spread that thing out and yeah. then just power back yep. through and see. But man, can you imagine running that play and getting stopped? And now, yeah. but. You know, it, but to me, I, I kind of feel like that he's gotten older, and I don't think he's as interested in in doing that anymore. I don't think he's interested, and in, I think that there's been there's some there's some times where his his ankle doesn't feel great, and he plays through it. And I don't think he wants to run. I don't think he wants to go through that and and take that chance again. Watch him against Detroit, just take off running. I know. And, and, <laughs> But but I the, the side of me that, that really does believe that he's not interested because he doesn't he doesn't. Well, we wanna, haven't seen it. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah, he just doesn't want to take a chance of not being available. But you know that's also the thing too is if there's an offset to that if you're not going to be that Dak if you're not going to yeah. be the Dak that's going to run and and make that a part of the game that the defense has to honor then he's going to have to be even better as a passer. Mm-hmm. Which means because he's going to take that part out, so defenses don't have to honor that part. Now mm-hmm. that's the part where I'm like, okay, great, 
if, if that's going to be the way you're going to do it, but yeah. that means you got to step it up. And I mean, obviously last night in the moments that mattered the most, I heard, I think it was Nick said it this morning on, on, uh, on Sean and RJ. Uh, he said, you know, this, this may have been, uh, his, his, uh, what was akin to Tony Roman, Tony Romo's Buffalo game yeah. where you play not such great football throughout the game. And then at the end, you figure out a way to get your team a win. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what it felt like yesterday. It didn't feel like it was his best day. I agree with you, Brian. I thought that uh, that fumble was about the quarterback. I think you, yeah. you, he just held the ball so long. You got to do something more, especially knowing those guys are already having some issues there on the edge. Yeah. You just got to get rid of that ball. You can't hold it that it, long. It, 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 there's, there's, there were moments of – and that's kind of what you get with Dak. There's moments of that brilliance. Yeah. And then there's moments where you're like, oh, my God, what did he just do? You know, and, and, you know, I, I think that, you know, in the post, he was even talking about how upset he was about yeah. giving up points. You know, the turnovers, I mean, they, they, they gave up, you know, they probably gave up 13 points down mm -hmm. there in the red zone. I mean, they just have not been good down there. I mean, they, they were good. Heck, they almost lost the damn game on a, I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when that ball was on the ground and then him having the awareness to go dive on it. You know, that, oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, I couldn't imagine losing the game. With... I almost threw up. Like, I, I, my mm. stomach, that. Are you guys yeah. on the field? <laughs> no, they don't let no, us do that No, we don't anymore. do that anymore. That, that used to be the fun part. They oh, don't yeah, let us do that anymore. Oh, yeah, when you get in there and MF yeah. the fans. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. That used to be fun. But now yeah. it's uh, now it's you, you stay in the press box until time to go down the locker Okay, room. well, yeah. that's, you know, that when that happened and you're sitting there thinking, and, and when he when he recovered it, I'm, I'm like, okay, they're going to win this game now. I yeah. mean, the the football gods are with us today. We're yeah. not going to lose. We're not going to lose this game today because of, you know. But it, it, hey, it's such a struggle watching this team on offense. Yeah, it it, it could have absolute brilliance to it, and just the like the pass like early in that game that the pass they threw to span forward that was the the motion and you're like going and they and he confused he confused the linebacker and you're thinking there you go. There you go, motion, you know, get up the field, wheel route, here we go, that kind of thing. But, and then the rest of the game, you're just like hanging on to your ear because of you know what's going on with the the plays. Yeah, when you mentioned that, I, I went back and looked at it. Like there were there were all kinds of plays that happened before that final. Oh yeah, that final touchdown yeah. throw. I mean, you had just the play before it. You had the 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 pass that he short hopped to, to, to Tolbert that yeah. racked him yeah. there in the end zone. It did. And then <laughs> you got me. yeah. And then the the one before that was the one where, where you got the fumble that Dak yeah. recovers. And then the one before that was the one where Dak runs down to get to the one and, and almost gave the game away. He, if, if he hits, if he touches that pylon and, and the, ball the ball goes out, yeah. At, they, yeah. they lose the ball, yeah. game over, right? Yeah. And so you had all three of those plays happen back to back to back after, by the way, Hunter Lipke, who I'm, I'm Nick isn't here. I'm sure Nick, Nick I saw him in the press box, like, uh, yes, yeah. that's my guy. But after he has the great screen, the screen. pass to get you down in position, yeah. mm -hmm. and then those three plays that all could have gone opposite and killed yeah. this game for you. Yeah. And then just like that, <coughs> Dak makes, makes the play yeah. that on fourth down makes the play you need for the touchdown. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to you want to call it clutch, call it clutch. He made the play he needed to make, but they certainly were playing with fire there. They oh, no. definitely were also, playing with fire. Also, you don't want a quarterback that just gives up and mentally gives True. up throughout the game. Yeah. So that's a great quality that he has as a quarterback. He's just staying in the game despite throwing those two interceptions, despite making those mistakes that you, talk, you just talked about. Um, he's still going to keep fighting all the way till the end. And that's something that even Mike McCarthy, right after the game, he highlighted when speaking about Dak Prescott. And that's something we've known about him. He's yeah. the quarterback that he's just going to keep fighting. Well, I will say this, Brian, they finally listened to the break mm -hmm. and they decided they were going to commit to a running back. His name is Rico Dowdle. Yeah. And what he did last night was 20 carries for 87 yards, a 4.4 average, two receptions for 27 yards and a yeah. touchdown. Committing to a running back seemed well, to have worked. Well, it took five weeks. It took five but weeks. But we're here now. But, but it seemed to have worked and I'm, I'm still convinced if they will just commit to him on yeah. a consistent basis, he is as long as he stays healthy, he is capable to be able to let this running game have some semblance of a yeah. good running game. I'm not saying he's great. 87 yards ain't going to be the one that's going to lead the league in rushing, yeah. but it'll be good enough with the passing game that you have to be able to complement what you do and force teams to respect. It. I thought there was going to be 27 yards rushing from Dowdle yesterday yeah. going into this game, the way that the Steelers play, but. You know they they figured they figured out ways to 
to take advantage of these of these edges some too, you know, with them playing wide. And, you know, these guys are built, you know, Herbig and, and Watt, they're built to rush the passer. They're not built to stand in there and play the run. And so you, if you mash on them a little bit and get bodies on them and make them have to fight those blocks, but the Cowboys offensive line did a really nice job of, there was a couple of times, the thing with, the thing with BB, and again, everybody will see this, BB gets so locked into getting that push on the down guy that he's late getting up on mm-hmm. like Queen, the linebacker. So it's going to be a six yard gain. But if he gets up on Queen, that thing's probably going to go. See, I'm starting to figure out these metrics, and it's like expected yards per carry mm-hmm. thing. I kind of get it now. There, there were times where I don't think there was any expected yards. I'm like, yeah. that place blocked terribly. There's right. no way you're. Now it's like, I'm interested to see what that number is yeah. because it's like, how many yards did Dallas actually leave on the field that could have been the way the plays? If they, they deal with what they could have, they, to do, yeah. We could have been coming out of this game, and I think we still are in a way. We could have come out of this game thinking, damn, Dallas ran the ball against a really good run defense yep. and, and had success doing it. And, and then actually on the other end, did a good job of stopping the run. So you caught a break, though, no question, with, you know, with Patterson, those guys not playing. That's fine. Hey, yeah. nobody feels sorry for you. Nope. Nope. Just keep playing. That's all you do. Well, something that uh, Rico, he talked about right after the game, he mentioned, you know, it, it. the more you run and the more they give you the chances and take the chances on you and you keep building on that, the more confident you become. And mm-hmm. we saw that throughout the game. He just kept running better and better and finding the hole and and just getting more comfortable and confident and I think that's something that's going to start carrying over next week and the following weeks I think that the Cowboys after this game they can I mean there's no way you don't see the results of what happened and you don't go with like okay Rico is our guy and let's start giving the ball handing him the ball a lot more and in a more consistent basis so I think This is exactly what this offense, this running game needed going forward because it was it was getting ugly. And now you have an answer or or a light of hope there with him. Can I ask you a question? Do you guys think you'll ever see Cooks? Or Dalvin Cook, excuse me, not Cooks. Oh, Dalvin Cooks. Cook. Dalvin 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 Cook. Cook. Dalvin Cook. Cook. Um at this point, I I think what I always ex- – well, not what I always expect. What I was starting to believe mm-hmm. is going to come true, which is I was starting to believe they think of him as an insurance policy. I do too. Um, and now after last night, I'm s- kind of convinced yeah. they see him as an insurance they policy. Sit, they sit Vaughn, but they had to get linebackers yeah. up yeah. because mm-hmm. of the special teams problems that they were running But into. the mix was really good last night in my yeah. opinion. Like you commit to, to having Dowdle be your lead mm-hmm. guy. You use Zeke because Zeke had some really good runs. I mean, quite as kept there in the second half. He had some runs that were yeah. really nice there when they were trying to kind of get back in yeah. that game. And and then then you use Lipke some, like move him around, do some different things. You can use him in the passing game, use him on third down. He can pick up the blitz, all those things. I think last night's mix is how I would like them to do it going forward. Okay, let me ask you this question then, sir. All right. <laughs> the fact that he wasn't in on the the goal line play that they fumbled. Who wasn't in? That Zeke was yeah, yeah. that that Dowdle was the running back. Yeah, did that tell you anything? Yeah, maybe it told me that that, that he might not be playing anymore. I don't know if it told me that because I still think there are people in this building I mean, his, that are convinced his, that he's still got his something. role is was going to be that right? Didn't we all kind of earmark him for that role? Yes, I think so. But I also think that at this point, I think what what we may be left with is he is a complimentary back, so he will spell Dowdle. They will use him in certain situations. Mm-hmm. He doesn't necessarily have a specific role that always is going to be his. Because I thought they might use him on third downs more to be able to pick no. up the blitz. Lipke is clearly that guy yeah. at this point. Yeah. So I, I don't know that he has that defined role. I do think he could be their spell back and, and kind of you know spell Rico when they need to spell him. Are you interested at all at seeing Cook? I, I still want to see him. I don't yeah. know if they're going to give it to us, but yeah. I, I still want to see him. I'm kind of. Do like, you think he can be better than than Dowdle? What Dowdle was last I, night? I think he could be better than Zeke. Fair. And if you're going to give me complimentary back guy, yeah, give me the complimentary back guy that I think would pair with Dowdle that could be better. What does he do better than Zeke? 
That, what I do you to, think he does? You I don't know to, that. I need to find that <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. You want to see what he does? I want to see. I, I just the thing He's about, like, I want to take my chances. Right. And see. Well, I, I, see. I, I would yeah. like to see just because I kind of feel like that that maybe that line got a little rhythm last night. Yeah. Maybe they kind of figured some things out. If they could get these wide receivers to block, you know. God, I watch San Francisco tape. All those receivers do is block, you yeah. know. But and they do it well. And they do it really well. Yeah. By the way, Flournoy, he could have cut call for holding twice. On one mean, of the critical plays? Oh, my gosh. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even uh, see it's that. number 80, and he's just like grabbing and just pulling a guy like, to don't the ground. Don't call it. Don't call and it. And I'm like going, bro, you're in there three plays, and you're going to get called for holding twice. <laughs> you know? So you'll see. All right, let's take a break real quick. We got our final break. We'll come back. And then we got to talk a little bit about the defense. Yeah. The question I will ask you guys is what was more impressive last night, the run offense or the run defense? Both were areas where the Cowboys have struggled. Both showed signs of life last night. We'll talk about it when we come back. DallasCowboys.com radio if you can't be at the stadium there's no better way to watch your cowboys than on an lg oled evo tv that's because everything you see is more lifelike every play every hit i mean you might as well be on the sidelines that's how clear it is it's all thanks to lg's legendary technology perfect black over 8.3 million self-lit pixels no one comes close LG OLED Evo is the best TV in the game for a reason. See for yourself at LG.com slash OLED Evo. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. If you shout, how about them Cowboys? You have that undeniable passion that's the heart of Cowboys Nation. And if you like to drink Dr. Pepper, you love the unique blend of its 23 flavors. Together, your one-of-a-kind fandom paired with the one-of-a-kind taste of a delicious ice-cold Dr. Pepper is the game day lineup that can't be beat. Better yet, gather your Cowboys and Dr. Pepper fan friends to watch the next game and crack open a delicious ice-cold Dr. Pepper for everyone. The wins will be even tastier. It's a Pepper thing. And we're going to overtime. Erica, how much have I spent on concessions? For questions about their money, Dallas Cowboys fans can turn to Erica, the virtual financial assistant in the Bank of America mobile banking app. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash Erica by your side. Bank of America, official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Erica responses may vary. Digital tools featured require downloading the mobile banking app and may only be available on select mobile devices. Erica is a mobile feature only available in the English language. Your chat may be recorded and monitored for quality assurance. Message and data rates and additional terms may apply. Bank of America, NA member FDIC. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is Todd Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to the break. AT&T, connecting changes everything. Welcome back. Final segment of The Break, live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. The segment brought to you by blockchain.com. All right, here we go. Let's talk about this Can defense. I give you a real quick metric of the day? Yeah, give it to me. When Dak, think about this. When Dak had over 2.5 seconds to throw, he was 13 of 23. Hmm. Isn't it strange? Yeah, that is. You feel like with the, but that happens to Jalen Hurts too. The longer he holds the ball, the worse he gets. The worse he gets. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so well, he, I mean, he his he had two touchdowns, two interceptions. He was thirteen to twenty three for two hundred one yards on passes where they were over two point five seconds of protection. Under two point five seconds of protection, he was sixteen of nineteen. Yeah, for, for one hundred fifty one yards. But actually, that does make some sense to me. Here's why. Because the longer he holds it, yeah. the likelihood is he was getting pressured, which yeah. means that the ball's probably well, not going to be the best ball. It may yeah. not be the best location. Right. He may be trying to get rid of it. Like, there's more stuff that happens the longer you take with the ball. They right? got worked, by the way, in that Brooks catch over the, early in the game. Yeah. He, he was over the line. I mean, Brooks caught the ball. It should have been a first down. Oh, yeah. Hockley's yeah, yeah. crew, I don't know what the hell they were doing that yeah. day. But but you're right. The, the 13 for 23 of the over 2.5, 
His yards per attempt was 8.7 mm. an attempt. What was it for under 2.5? 7.9. Okay. So it was it was pretty, you know, it was pretty close, but yeah. but he he was much better. He was much better when as far as the under yeah. two point, but man, they got rid of the ball pretty quick on some of the stuff, the screens yeah. and things like that. Which you need some of those kind of plays. Yeah. And you you yeah. talk about it all the time, Brian. Like this is not a team that's traditionally been good at the screen. No, but last no. night they had a couple screens that that were Throw pretty a damn good. parade downtown yeah. Dallas. It was really good. Yeah. That was that was <laughs> that was unexpected. But they had a couple screens that. I really mean, Hunter Lipke, last night. throw him the screen. He'll do Throwing that. Out. You get exactly what I mean. It was a great block by BB to get him up in the alley, and yeah. away you went. I actually love him, and I love getting Ferguson in those kind of situations because we. What we know about Ferguson is he breaks tackles. He knows how to that elude tacklers. That third down play that he made, because he catches the ball late in the game, he catches the ball short of the sticks yep. by about six yards. Yep. And you had no doubt he was going for and that first like down And you're like going, marker. oh, here we go. And yeah. boom, he's just running through guys, yep. you know, and he's going to get the first down. Yeah, so. I love how he runs after the catch. Mm-hmm. But talk to me about the defense. If you had to, to kind of say which one was, let's say, more surprising, um, which was more <laughs> surprising between their run defense and their run offense last night? I mean, when you look at what the Steelers do or don't do on the running game, you got to take that into account. We talked about it on the show, how they're, they lead the league on like attempts, yeah. but they're yeah. not as successful right, with right. running the ball. So that's something to keep in mind. So my, my credit, my bigger credit would be given to the Cowboys offense because mm. this is an area where we definitely have just – Overall, not seeing it. And when you look at the defense, I mean, that's the, the and I mean the Steelers defense. The, I I think they hold a higher power than the Steelers offense here. Thanks. So for sure, you got to give credit to what the Cowboys O line was able to do, along with Rico Dowell and in, in the game that they were able to put as far as the running game. Kendricks eight tackles on run stops on had have twenty six run snaps. Okay, eight run tackles. Yep, overshone with four. You go down the list. Chauncey Golston, 23 snaps, four run tackles. He had a good game, by the he way. He had a really good game, yep. by the way. How about Mozzie Smith, 13 snaps, four run tackles? Mm. So, see, okay. you, you had to – I mean – Is that two weeks in a row now that Mozzie has kind of shown up I mean, here? He, he, he got knocked back a couple of times. But, you know, Mozzie – Hey, it's steps. Baby it, steps. It, it, baby steps. <laughs> baby steps. But, you know, you go through yards per, yards per play on these tackles – they're all within manageable numbers. They're all 3.3s, 3.2s. Yeah. You know, when you play the Ravens and you're playing the Saints, those numbers were 6.4, yeah. 6.8, 7.1. You know, it's the last couple of weeks, they've done a much better job of with their fits and their finishing. They were running in a they were running in a clip. They were one of the one of the bottom teams in the league when it came to tackle percentage. Yeah. And you could tell just watching the tape or watching the game. Hell, you didn't even need the tape. You can watch TV copy and go, they're not tackling very well today. I felt like that they, you know, that, that this whole thing was about going to get their linebackers. That's what I was surprised. I was surprised. I was surprised with the run defense. Well, actually, I take that back. I was surprised with their ability to run the football. Run defense, I felt like that with with the way the Steelers' inability to get linebacker. We talked about it when we broke them down. Their inability to get linemen up on linebackers mm-hmm. look at the look at the tackles from all the linebackers yep. in this game yep. yeah that's something that that we kind of talked about going in and you know their back is he he's he's at the end that's you know but you didn't let the quarterback kill you that's the thing i was worried about the designed quarterback runs especially the first snap of the game he goes running around yeah, the end for about like, eight oh, yards i'm like yeah. okay here yep. we go yep. this, we're gonna see this but that was his longest run of the day. And I would have been more concerned if they had Warren and Patterson playing. Oh, like God. we said last week, I thought those two guys added a dynamic dimension yeah. to their run game that they just didn't have last night. Um, I think those backs are really what fuel that running game, in my opinion, for as much as it's going to be fueled. I thought that's where they could have had some some issues mm-hmm. that the Cowboys would have had a hard time dealing with. I think when you when you didn't have those two guys in there, it just made it a lot easier for Dallas to, to be able to get the guys in the right place. But I'm not going to take anything away from Dallas either. That's two weeks in a row. You can say what you want. They, they, they have not been stopped and run well this season. Those two games, last game and this game, they've done a really, really good job. And actually, if you look at the first half of yesterday – it was looking like they were getting run on pretty good. They they Pittsburgh had 70 yards at the half. Right. 
it rushing and and but they had shut down their passing offense right. to basically nothing, so they couldn't sustain drives. It kind of felt were, like they were one could... of seven on third downs. Like they yeah. were they were shutting them down. Yeah. So they really couldn't get anything going, but they were running the ball well. I kind of felt like if they could have got the game to thirteen to three. You know that yeah. that that there was no way. Sto- yeah, there's yeah. no way the Steelers are coming back. Right. Not throwing the ball the way they were throwing the ball. Yeah. So, but yeah, it 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 was a it was a it was a nice day as far as that. Deep. And especially with all the guys, the backup guys. Yeah, that's I, what I'll, I was gonna say. With all the backups, I mean, you I'll gotta say, give extra credit to yeah. that. You know, yep. if Tank, if Tank and and Michael were playing in that game, that would have been far worse for the Steelers. Yeah. They, they those they would they couldn't have blo- they wouldn't have been able to block those guys because they had trouble blocking. They had trouble blocking Golston. They had trouble blocking Wheat. Yeah. They had trouble blocking Osa. Yeah. You know, they they had problems. Yeah, Osa had a good game too. Yeah. He was yeah. using the backfield yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh all right. We're gonna that's a wrap. We're gonna be back tomorrow. We're gonna do a little bit of bigger picture. We got a lot of things left from this game that we'll kind of talk about. We'll talk about some of the injuries Tuesday that the Cowboys questions? sustained. We got some questions that Brian yeah. will have. We'll go inside the mind of Brian Broaddus. We'll do all that tomorrow. So join us for, uh, for until then for Brian Broaddus and Amber Garcia. I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been the break live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!